So as you know by now, Eric Schneiderman is out, and right now we have an interim replacement, Solicitor General Barbara Underwood. But now, trust me, lawmakers will figure out where we go from here. The Senate and Assembly in Albany, they're going to have a joint session, and they will pick someone collectively to fill out the remainder of the term, which runs out this year. It could be Underwood. It could be somebody else. Then, on Election Day in November, the voters will decide the next Attorney General. Several names magically instantly surfaced, and you can see them on your screen right now. The biggest name, probably, Congresswoman Kathleen Rice. She's a former Nassau County DA and now Congressman on the island. You also have State Senators Todd Kaminsky from the island, Mike Giannaris of Queens, also members of the Assembly, uh, Helene Weinstein from Queens, uh, Joe Lentul of Brooklyn, thought to be a placeholder possibly, Jeff Nin Dinowitz from the Bronx, and of course, the name goes on. Politics is also in play here, of course. Many of the people targeted by Schneiderman are now doing a victory lap and not being too subtle. That includes people named Trump, shockingly. Schneiderman, he went after Trump University. By the way, this week we'll be talking about an author who uh, peels back what really happened in that case. But that case was settled for $25 million, even after Donald Trump bragged that he never settles. AG also investigated the Trump Foundation and forced it to stop accepting donations that after news broke, he was using foundation money to buy things like portraits of himself. I can't make this up. Schneiderman also asked the New York legislature to pass a bill allowing him to file criminal charges against people pardoned by the president. Significant, obviously, in the Mueller probe. Now, Donald Trump Jr. immediately started going after Schneiderman, like father, like son, Donnie trolled him on Twitter. He made fun of the role-playing, the eyeliner that Schneiderman reportedly wore, and also all the tweets Schneiderman had sent about the rule of law, protecting women, and also going after his dear old dad. Kellyanne Conway, she also chimed in. She tweeted out, gotcha, attached to a retweet of Schneiderman posting that said President Trump is not above the law. Hey, I get it. There's a comeuppance, and certainly Schneiderman had a coming, but I seem to have a hard time remembering Conway speaking out after all the accusations were made about her boss, or after Donald Trump admitted that he liked to grope women and forcibly kiss them. Well, let's bring in our panel to get into all of this. Charlie King, New York co-chairman at the Mercury at Mercury Public Affairs. He also is senior advisor, campaign advisor to Andrew Cuomo's re-election campaign. Scott Vanderhoff, Republican Rockland County executive for five terms, now co-chairman of the Palisades Institute of Dominican College, and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. And to both of you, this is when it's good not to be an elected official. My God. Um, Charlie, uh, first off, um, Dom and I said off the top, covered a lot of politics, heard a lot of rumors, but nothing in the area code of this. Had you had any inkling that this was out there and literally from the posting of the story in less than three hours time, you had the Attorney General of New York resign? The answer is no. Uh, usually when these things are percolating, you, you, know, you have your right. ear to the ground, you hear a lot of stuff. And uh, you take pride in being on the inside and hearing about this stuff. And I actually heard about this from somebody way out. Said, have you heard anything, some things about uh, Eric Schneiderman? I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? And then two hours later, boom, the article comes out. I mean, total shock, came out of left field. And going back to the point about any inkling about this about uh, Eric Schneiderman, I we grew up in the Democratic Party together on on the Upper West Side and no inkling of, of this at all. I mean, just a pure shocker right. as to the physicality and all of that. So. And I encourage people to read the article for yourselves. It's very well sourced here. There really was no wiggle room um, for there to be deniability, at least plausible at that. Um, Scott, the hypocrisy. Um, and, and to me, I immediately thought of Spitzer, okay? And while the violence wasn't connotable, I remember Spitzer held a press conference, we were there, where he made sure that everyone knew that prostitution was not a victimless crime here. And these women didn't go into this work here because this was a vocation they were seeking, but they were being forced into it. And these Johns should certainly be named to pay a price. Oh, and then he became one of them. In this particular case, to go as far out as he did on Me Too, to go after Weinstein and everything else, and when you read not only his actions, 
but also the language he used with these women and denigrating them for trying to be involved in, in co- I mean, what a monster and what a hypocrite. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it, it's stunning hypocrisy. <clears throat> and and I, I never was a fan of uh, Attorney General Snyder. Because? Because his, his, I thought, he's to me, he's an ambulance-chasing political leftist, okay? What he did was whatever he had to do to get that moment's day uh, notoriety, okay? But, th- but the worst thing of all of it, I mean, no, that's incorrect. One of the troubling things about it for people who run for office is that this taints every single elected official. They stand up there and they smile and before the cameras and they talk about the do good and, and behind the scenes, who are they? And I think that's as troubling as this individual case is, the, the, the taint on people. And the answer is, all oh, politicians, they always lie. Well, it can't be that way. I mean, it, it, theoretically, it shouldn't be that way. And, Here and he really, stands up. And the person who calls out Trump, legitimately so, for some of the most, uh, most abhorrent behavior and abuse of powers and all the rest, he turns out to be a fraud. And, and another part of the story troubling was, if you believe uh, the, the retelling, and there's no reason, at least for me, not to, people try to talk these women out of coming forward mm-hmm. because he was serving an important political role. <clears throat> I mean, to me, well, not as bad as the sin uh, of, of Schneiderman. My God, is that the messaging I- in 2018? Well, right. I think things get very complicated here. And I just want to amplify a, a couple of points uh, that the, the county executive says. First, I'm going to say a bad thing <clears throat> about S- Scott Vanderhoff. He's a Republican. <laughs> but now let me say a good thing about him is that he was never a hypocrite when he was in office. And I think that that's a very important point for everybody on either side of the aisle is that, and in a weird way, you know, Trump in some ways is consistent because, in a weird way, because he's a bad guy, he doesn't necessarily claim that he's a good guy. A lot of people do a lot of explaining for him where they twist in pretzels. Uh, and being consistent, being true to who you are and what you are is very important. He does say he has the best words, though. But okay, well, that, right, yes, but yes. that's about yes. as far <laughs> as he goes to right. being, uh, being inconsistent. And I think that the, the challenge here for people on the left is when you have an issue, when you have true issues against someone as bad as Donald Trump, uh, but when you are inherently flawed, especially, I mean, when Eric the Schneider... position of the attorney general. Right, right. Uh, you can't go so far as to almost assume the, the movement and pretend that it's yourself when you are that flawed. And that's when everything comes cascading down. And that's when women who get caught in this position feel like, well, if I take on someone who's a symbol of something who's trying to do right, it gets, it, the whole mm. thing gets perverted and perverse. And there's politics to this, Andrew. First of all, just <clears throat> listen. If, if somebody gives some free advice to anyone with the last name Trump, Attempt to take the moral high ground for one day and, and not to be, my God, they managed in, before the news cycle was even over, to make it about them and to look so bad consequently about being frauds themselves on this. Leave that aside. A lot of people want this job. Um, and there is an undercurrent that says, you better pick a woman, um, given all the, uh, the, the language and, and everything attached that surrounds this case. Um, I went through the metrics. The logistics is assembly and senate get together. They right. pick somebody <clears throat> and they serve till the till the election. With a heavy lean on the assembly, just because they have the numbers when they come to the joint session, and so Carl Hasty will have an outsized uh, say in who the next uh, interim uh, attorney general is. There is a lot of clamor for a woman to be picked. It's I think it's it's unlikely that the solicitor general, who's now the acting attorney general, will stay, uh, only because it's such a stepping stone position. Uh, historically. Any number and by all accounts, she's extremely well qualified, yes, too. Yeah. But, but historically, any number of attorney general, state attorneys general, have elevated to become governor in the state, the last being Elliot Spitzer. Um, oh, I think it's the best. So, just I think it's the best job in New York politics, even better than the governor. You get to pick the people you want to go after, you get to be a sheriff of Wall Street if you want, you get to pick causes that you want to champion to go after bad guys. I mean, you're right, Andrew. It would make sense. For the legislature to name a placeholder, somebody who announced that they would not run for re-election this November, but I, I doubt that's what's going to happen. I think whoever gets picked <laughs> you know, think will so? wind up running as an incumbent no, for the no, job. This is a very—I I would defer to Charlie, but this is a very important decision. They want an incumbent in there. 
They want to put in there a woman if they can, uh, a person of color perhaps, but I'm certainly uh, to, who will run in November mm -hmm. because we want to have what that. I'm saying, yeah. Oh, is that what well, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Here's where the politics gets very interesting, uh, actually. The Republicans might not want a, an incumbent, and uh, uh, Senator Flanagan, Republican leader, has, has stopped this, this Senate from coming together, controlled by the Republicans and the Democrats, because you have to have a joint session in order to vote. And the thinking behind that, for those of us who are speculating, is because they don't want to have an incumbent so that they have a better chance running against a, a non-incumbent. So that's sort of the politics of it. Democrats would like to have an incumbent because then it actually have the sense of incumbency. Some of the other candidates that were not on the list, they think there's a sense that having a candidate of color would be a plus. Tish James has been mentioned as somebody. Loretta Lynch is somebody who has been mentioned as well um, uh, on the list as well. Uh, even Alfonso David, who uh, uh, not a woman of color, obviously, but a person of color, openly gay, uh, has been has been mentioned. Um, so it's fascinating how this all works. Uh, and then one other interesting that this is just the, the yeah. fascinating the politics of it. But with Kathleen Rice, there's some thought that she might be able to run as a as a woman for Congress and still stay a, a member of Congress because the, the way that the primaries are jiggered, she can still be running for Congress and run for Attorney General. So mm -hmm. if she won the primary mm -hmm. for Attorney General, then she could pull out. It, so and, I'm not and, sure and if just, it works I mean, or if not. I could, two other things to keep in mind here. I mentioned this briefly. The Attorney General in New York will have a role in the Mueller probe, okay, especially depending on how pardons are handed out. Think about that. And we, we, we mentioned names. Uh, like Loretta Lynch. Um, but then also, as this goes into play, the, the logic <coughs> is to win statewide in today's day and age as a Republican in New York is going to be really hard. So maybe even without the power of the incumbency, the Democrats could have an overwhelming advantage come the fall. But I'm Just sorry. Just two, two yeah. points. Uh, Flanagan, John Flanagan has said he's not going to, he's, he will be part of the joint. Uh, uh, um, so he finally backed uh, down on Yeah, okay. at least that's what I've heard. But interestingly enough, to Troy's other point, the one of the persons that might be of interest would be Lieutenant uh, Governor Hochul, mm. because he, I, think the, I think the governor may want to switch people there. She has name recognition. She's been all around the state, uh, and she has a legal background. Would it be interesting pick? Mm. And again, I'm telling you, uh, to me at least, the best plum gig that there is where you get to basically pick your spots. Cy Vance, by the way, with his own problems with Weinstein, he's also promising a look into this probe. So uh, the moving parts out of this, something to keep an eye on. All right, when we come back, though, we'll turn to politics specifically. Tonight, the midterm election season kicks into high gear today. That is voters in four states hit the polls. We're going to take a look at the races, the implications, and, of course, the Trump factor.